97. Now join hands with each other. Hold on to each other. Just hold on now to someone who's next to you and just feel what it's like to be a part of a community, a, a people, a family. Yeah, stand together. Who is that over there preaching? What child was that? <laughs> oh, there you are. Hello there. Hello. See, don't ever say we didn't take time for the children. Hello. Got to take time for the children. Now I want you to call out the people and the concerns, the illnesses, the conditions, whatever they are, that you want us to pray for as a collective community. And Ron Swish is going to lead us in this prayer. But I want you to call it out before he begins. Just call him out now. Come on. Yeah. Listen now, listen, listen, listen. In the stillness, oh God, hear the sound of our many voices of concern. Some of us are depressed and need encouragement. Some of us are disabled and just need respect. Some of us are worried and just need assurance and peace of mind. Well, Some of us are confused and need guidance and direction. Some of us just broke and need some money. Man. Some of us are compassionate and lift up prayers for others. Some of us are just glad to be here and speak of joy. Some of us don't know why we're here and don't know what to say at this time, but gather us all up. All of our voices, all of our concerns, all of our issues into your living and loving and healing presence. Transform us into a community that we so desire to be. Full of faith and love and joy and hope. For those of us who are healthy, let that health flow into those who are not. May the spirit of love fall on us and help those who might not be loving. Make us sensitive to the needs and the feelings and hurts of others. Bind our thoughts away from just striving and gaining to attitudes of sharing and giving. Help us to embrace the poor and the neglected and Lord, as we come into this new year, let us always have the attitude of being thankful and thoughtful and responsive and doing justice. Now, Lord, in this stillness of this time and, and as we go from prayer to celebration to praise and to song, remain in us and go with us always. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. Shalom. And shalom. shalom.
seats over here. Virgil, would you send some of those people right here? Give me about five, okay? Right over here. We got to get you all seated somewhere. Anybody got an extra lap? We got to get you down there some way, somehow. Uh, these seats will be there will be more seats available up here a little later on, okay? Anybody got a seat beside them? Hold your hand up. There's a seat over there. Hey, hello. 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 That's right. Get closer together. Uh, when the seal's full. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, we got to get them so the people sitting can see. We have to get those three or four right there out of the way so the people can see. Now, those of you that we've just cleared this far, remember, you give extra money this morning. That's right. We're inviting people to join the ensemble as of this Wednesday. Come at 645, and when you come, those of you that would like to become members of the Glide Ensemble, see John Turk here. Uh, he will make you a part of the Glide Ensemble. Whether you can sing, on, uh, no, I don't mean that. If you can, if, carry a tune if you can. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay? Carry a tune, please. But anyway, we'd love to have you. And we have people that will welcome you, the captains and the other persons welcome you. We're very fluid here in how we work at things. Okay, okay, speaking of the Glide Ensemble, I want you now to hear some real, real gospel, spiritual, and upbeat music. The Glide Ensemble. Stir our very souls We look 
is hot in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I tell you. It's hot in here. Oh, yeah. Goodness. We've got something very special this morning. Uh, Janice, where are you? Janice Mirkatani, who was president of the place and also director of all the programs. Will you come here? I am her husband. Good morning, everybody. I know that many of you, or most of you, have heard that Glide provides 37 comprehensive programs here and a continuum of care. Now, President Clinton last month had announced that teen drug abuse was on the rise by over 30 percent. Well, CNN uh, came here to interview our kids last month because Glide has been successful because of these comprehensive programs in reducing drug abuse among our teenagers by over 35 percent. And, and the teenagers themselves The teenagers themselves have acknowledged that the difference here at Glide, as opposed to other more traditional, more traditional prevention programs, is that Glide provides the support, the extended family, the love, and all of the programs that help them feel good about themselves. The Glide Recovery Programs for Adults has graduated over 1,600 people from its program since its inception 19, nine years ago. Eighty-five percent of the graduates have a self-reported success rate of staying clean. Yeah. Seventy percent of the clients have gained knowledge about HIV and AIDS, STDs, and the necessity of practicing safer sex. Women are taking opportunities in Glide Health programs to take care of themselves and prevent pregnancy and illnesses. Women and men are gaining self-definition and self-worth and reclaiming their lives and their children, going on to higher education and achieving gainful employment. And it is because you are an extended family to them. It is because of the continuum of care of all our programs and because your love provides hope for change. Today we are celebrating the graduation of our 25th generation. So Williams and Janice Mericatani for giving us this place where we can come and we can graduate on our 25th generation and be successful and go on with our lives. Okay. The American traditional ethical system is a system in which the welfare of an individual is a function and a result of the welfare of their community. In this system, an individual is happy only if and when the community is happy. The essence of this kind of ethical system is the preservation and the integration of social as well as spiritual life. The background of this system is a traditional African society's concern for each other. 
Its goal is to unite members of the community into one great harmonious family in which each one continues to seek the good and welfare of many. In the African traditional ethical system, the individual is happy only when and if the community is happy. We'll now have our, one of our speakers, Charles Gaston. Good morning, everybody. My name is Charles Gaston. My name is Charles Gaston. I'm recovering from alcohol, coke, and weed, and a lot of other things in life. You know, Glide has been a, a big inspiration in my life because uh, since last February, when I started this program, you know, I came, I came here in this program out of SSI, right? and not knowing the blessing that God had behind that. You know what I'm saying? Because today, I'm a changed man, clean and sober since February. <clears throat> Thank you. And it's so special, you know, for Cecil Williams and Jan, and Jan to have this program here, not only, for, you know, drug and alcohol program, but they have so many other programs, you know. You can come here and eat, you know what I mean? They got had, uh, classes for, for kids, you know, daycare and all this type of stuff. You know, it's just a blessing. You know, I just feel so spiritually uh, moved today, you know what I mean? Uh, it, it just, I, I feel good. I feel, I feel, you know, I'm a, I'm a little speechless, you know. But uh, I'm not that good at this. I just want to thank Cecil and Jan and again for opening the doors because the doors is open for people who need help. I mean, they, if they need, to, need help and, and they're willing to come here and take suggestions and do the footwork, you can, you can change your life. And I've been changed. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the counselors too for being there calling us on our stuff, you know what I mean? Because they be, they real, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't go easy on us, and you know, that's what it took, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I just like to thank everybody, the class, my class peers, and everybody that's here. I feel privileged just to be up here. And thank you very much. Life goes on. My name is Ntombe, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic, and I'm also a staff member on this program. All right. I'd like to introduce the staff at this time. Janine Sylvia. All right. John Jacobs. Juanita William Johnson. Maxine. All right. We have come home, Mother Africa. We have come home, Mother Earth. We have come home, Mother Earth. We have come home, Mother Rebirth. We have come home, Mother Rebirth. Our lives come from the womb of a new spirit. Our lives come from the womb of a new spirit. A new courage. A new courage. A new faith. A new faith. A new hope. A new hope. A new love. A new love. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. It's our time. It's our time. It's recovery time. It's recovery time. program. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and they said, but this is the way to do it. And we said, no, let's create. Let's be creative. Let's do something different. Because we felt it was critical to try to reach not only the hearts and the minds and the souls of people, but it was important for people to have a sense of who they were and are and what they must do in their discovery 
of who they really are. And so we began the process. It has never been easy. It will never be easy. But Lord, thank you. We are overcoming. We're overcoming. It's not easy when somebody's on dope or alcohol to work through things. It's not easy. But I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the best groups. All of them are good so far. But this is the best group. Look at the children who are here. The young people who are here with the parents. That's very important. A family ought to recover together. You hear me? Together. And what they're saying is that you're part of their family also. So thank you for helping us to make things happen by your continued support and your continued investment in hope. And thank you for making choices that empower you and empower all of us so we can continue on our journey. I know you will be here to help us make that journey as we go along, because once you come through, you don't leave here. You know that, don't you? Yeah. God bless you. Thank you very much. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. Would you come at this time and... Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year to you. I have three items I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to speak very briefly, but they are all very serious, so I do need your attention. First thing I want to talk to you about is pledging, very briefly. All of you have in front of you in the pews what, what are called pledge cards. We have all made New Year's resolutions, and we even intend to keep some of them. One of the things that I know all of us talk about after the holidays is our resolution as to our personal budgets. And here at Glide, as a member of the board, I want to tell you that we too have a budget. It's a budget uh, that we hope helps to assist people to help themselves. And we need some predictability in that budget so that we can be fiscally responsible and accountable for what goes on at Glide. Your pledging to us helps you with your budget and helps us with ours. You, if you will fill out the pledge cards, it adds predictability to our budget. Put them in the offering bags as they come in front of you, or if you cannot fill them out in time for the offering bags, please take them to the pledge table downstairs after the celebration. Those of you who have already made your pledges, you can pick up your envelopes downstairs after the celebration at the pledge table. Now, I'd like the ushers to come forward because we are going to take up the offering, the one and only time at Glide that we do take up an offering, and I just want to say a couple of things to you about that. I cannot add anything to what you have just experienced with the 25th generation and the statements made by the people in that generation, both orally and by their physical presence. Here at Glide, what we choose to do is help people to help themselves by affirming them and by helping them to affirm each other. We don't do it in a condescending or a paternalistic or maternalistic way. We try to give everyone his and her dignity, and we do that in a number of ways. We have a food program that all of you have heard about here at Glide. We serve three meals a day every day of the year. That's December 26th, the day after Easter, the day before Thanksgiving. We, sell, we, we provide meals every day of the year. We also have what is called a crisis center at Glide. And as I said at 9 o'clock, can you imagine anything more redundant at Glide but a crisis center? 
because we are dealing with that all the time. And this year is going to be so challenging for all of us because there is no welfare reform. There is welfare removal. There are going to be more and more people in need. There are people on public assistance who have had their grants reduced. And where are they going to come and where are you going to send them? right here to Glide. And we need your assistance more than ever this year to meet all of these challenges. The last thing I want to do is make a couple of announcements. First of all, Bible study is this Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, you're studying Matthew, the 15th chapter. Uh, next Sunday after the 11 a.m. celebration, you can help us assemble Glide's new brochure. And to help with uh, this project, you need to sign up downstairs at the volunteer table today. We have new member volunteer orientation in room 206 at 1230. For those of you who want to become members, we need you to come to room 201 after the celebration, which is to my right, right around the corner here. Downstairs in Freedom Hall after the celebration, we have tapes and CDs of the Glide Ensemble, tapes and videos of today's celebration, Glide t-shirts, the new Glide sweatshirt. It didn't get up oh, here yet. Oh, no. Yeah. Faye, yeah. who's in charge of volunteers, has on one today. Look for Faye today. It's a beautiful sweatshirt. Uh, could you please stand up? This is a, our Glide model. Thank you. Thank you very much. All proceeds from uh, uh, your purchase of the tapes and the books by Cecil and Jan go directly to benefit uh, Glide programs. Also, we want to welcome all of you visitors to our in, uh, information table after the celebration at Freedom Hall. We want to thank all of you for coming and celebrating with us. Come back and celebrate with us, and Happy New Year. Thank you, thank you, Gordon. Before we sing this, have the Glide Ensemble sing this next number, and, and then I'll speak, um, I want to thank you for the year 1996. We had an increase of 20% more people in our lines coming to us in 1996. We had more volunteers than we've ever had at Glide. Last year, in 1995, we had 25,000. I'm sure we've exceeded 25,000 in 1996. It's phenomenal. People come from all over wanting to volunteer. Now we have, have a, a huge wave of people who are interested in coming here for training. All kinds of people coming here for training. And I don't know what we're going to do about it, because, well, I don't know what we're going to do about it. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to pull it together. And we've got to let people know that uh, they can only come at certain times, because it's overwhelming to get two this week, and eight next week, and five the next week. And it's, well, anyway, we've got to work at that. Last but not least, I want to thank you for your commitment, the kind of commitment where you you let us know that something's going on here. And so you commit your money and your finances. And you make your pledges. And you follow through with those pledges. We won't know what kind of year we've had until we finish. It's amazing here. We, we get most of our money for a $5 million budget. We don't realize until the months of November and December the largest amount of money that we receive. We have to wait on the holidays to get the largest amount of money. So uh, it, it, it's either faith or something that we have that where well, you have to wait for it, but it comes usually, usually. Sometimes it doesn't though. So we have to look at our budget and say, uh oh, that's it. But thank you for all that you've done, everything you've done. It really has made it count for us, very much so. And we love you and appreciate you. And I see a few more seats up here that we can get people to sit down. But before we do, I want to get the Glide Ensemble to sing a song, you know, the one we did before.
Okay? Huh? Yeah, but that comes at, like we did it before, at the 9 o'clock. Yeah.
Jan and John and I wrote that song. That's Love to give. Right. Jan and I are observing our 15th year anniversary. Yeah. Um, uh, so you won't think that one lives happily ever after. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> I, tell that one, I will really be upset. Which one? I don't know which one you're talking about. Don't do it. Oh, I won't tell that one. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to tell that one. No, 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 no. No, no. That one's not so funny. No, no. <laughs> I, 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 I said at the 9 o'clock, and this is true, that, that our relationship, our marriage, has been blitz and bliss. Okay? It's not easy if you're going to change. And I want to be a kind of person that will change, where I want to make sure that I listen to you and make sure that I hear your messages and that I support you and that I hope that you will always know that even when I'm wrong, I'm trying to be right. <laughs> Well, we won't get started. <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to me and for us to, when we fall out, to make up. It sure is good making up. I'm telling you. It really is. Dennis. Thank you. Thank you, Cecil. <laughs> thank you for listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> and when he's right, he's really right. <laughs> Well, I um, was hoping that I could have a poem for Cecil's, Cecil today for our anniversary, but I, it seems like this year, 1997, is going to be one where I'm constantly going to be trying to catch up. Um, but in thinking about and celebrating the year, the new year, and the new year, and each year that we spend together is a new year, um, that we should work very hard at creating. Um, I thought of um, the, a metaphor for Cecil because he's been talking about it in the last few sermons and that is hope and the, and the metaphor of the circle, the circle of hope. You know, he demands us to do so many things that are hard to do like um, unconditionally loving and trusting and um, forgiving and facing oneself and breaking the denial and embracing your power and stop self-destructing. And so I want to thank you for the hope that you bring to me and that you bring to everyone. Um, even when um, it's just, no I'm not. Um, <laughs> Even when it's a personal thing, you know, that we get caught up in, because it's hard to give up the victim. It's hard to give up the powerlessness. It's hard to give up the self-destruction, those patterns. And then Cecil tells, tells us about the people who move from Rwanda to Tanzania in those circles where they have to embrace one another to survive as tribes, as family, and where indeed um, you can overcome famine, and if people can overcome famine and drought and war. And when we have this line of people who come here for nourishment, for food, for spirituality, 
and he, you go out there and you embrace them and we create this extended family together. That is truly great hope. And the circles here of recovery for the men and women and for the children, there is great hope when our kids go on to college and break the cycle and when women become healthy and stop their patterns of self-destruction. It's great hope. And when he embraces me and helps me with untying my knots of madness, there's great hope. So thank you. Thank you. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Soloists come down. Soloists. Let's have the soloists come now. Yeah. The soloists. I'm not going to wait to do the other number. Thank you. I'm on. No, we're not. Go ahead. Go ahead. But I'm, we're not going to sing that song. Let's get this going here. I'm going to go and speak now. Okay? Thank you, Glide Ensemble. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I keep thinking very much so why we come to this place, why we gather here. And I got to working at it and, and came up with um, something that I hope will speak to you. When we gather, why do we come here as a point of our coming together? Well, there are many answers to this in many ways. Uh, uh, I got a letter from, and Jan and I got a letter from a, a woman who recently um, has been coming back to Glide. She moved away from here, not too far, but in a very, as she said, a very beautiful place. Um, there's a lot of beauty there in her community. It's uh, definitely suburbia. Um, she went on to say that, uh, however, she's been facing a spiritual crisis, in quotes, a and uh, recently she came to Glide. Uh, she came to visit a friend of hers and while here uh, came on a Sunday morning and sat in the pew and was by herself. But the interesting thing that developed after she got here was even though she had just recently uh, departed from a long time relationship. She had also been uh, intensified with, uh, with uh, depression. Uh, her depression had intensified. Uh, she also had the business that she had had begun to abate. Uh, going through crisis, spiritual crisis. But she said when she sat in the pew, 
And even though she was alone, in a short span of time, she felt surrounded by love. And in being surrounded by love, she said, I began to experience hope. I was no longer alone. I was not only surrounded by love, by, but by a sense of community, by a sense of belonging. I knew, she said, I was home. We gather here for many reasons. You've got yours and I've got mine. And as we gather, they may be varied in, in the differences that we have. But I do know this, that we gather here for something that she said at the latter part of her letter. She said, even though I'm in this beautiful community, something is missing. And she defined it then as soul. Soul is missing. And then she put in parenthesis, you know what I'm talking about. That soul is missing. It has to do with one's sense of who they are and what they must do and how they must do it, of how one deals with uh, uh, a, a situation where she describes it as being empty, the many empty spaces in her life. But she said, when I got to Glide, those spaces were filled and full of, of, of a concern and love and, and a new experience for me. And so, for many of us, we come here because we know we've got empty spaces. We're alone, and we're lonely. And we don't know sometimes how we can connect with ourselves as well as those around us. There seems to be an estrangement. We seem to always be getting into trouble. Or if we're not getting into trouble, thinking that we're into trouble. A feeling that we're into trouble. Sometimes it just doesn't work. We're always trying to make sure that some way we can prove ourselves to each other. I got to prove myself to you, or uh, to all of you, so you will know that I'm all right. It, 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 you know, it has to do with, am I all right? Am I, am I really all right? You see? As things keep going down and getting away from us. This being the case then, I know that when one comes to worship, what one would call traditional worship, that what one does immediately is discovers in many places, many churches, many communities, uh, many situations where there is the colony, the community of believers, that people come first and foremost to acknowledge God, to say to God, God, we praise you, we acknowledge you, we are here in your presence. That's one thing. Secondly, in, in traditional terms, there is also not only to praise God, but to thank God for the blessings, uh, for the deeds he has, uh, he has meted out, he has uh, encouraged, uh, which creates a flow to, to all people. But for me, it's not only acknowledgement and to thank God for the many blessings, but there's something else to me, which is much more important at points, and that is, I come to a community of people who have embraced something in their lives where they are no longer what they were, but have moved to something of where they are going at life. So, to put it very bluntly, I, I don't just come here to acknowledge and praise God, I come here to get with you. I come here to know you. I come here because this is where I meet God in a strange relationship with people. See, I come here to sing and dance with God and God's people. It's something quite different when you sing and dance with God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. You know? I'm so glad, Lord, that I'm not in a dead church. Thank you. Thank you for letting us shout and 
sing and thank you for letting us dance and to clap our hands. Thank you for letting us get loose. Thank you for letting us become and be. Thank you. Thank you that we can yell out. Thank you. God knows there's so many churches right at this time. If you yelled out, you would be put out. <laughs> if you're going to meet God, you got to meet God with something. You, wait, you didn't hear. That's very, very heavy. I just gave you. If you're going to meet God, you got to meet God with something. And just saying hallelujah and yeah, uh, thank you all. It's good to be with people. See, see the important thing, what we emphasize, is that uh, just God is around. And I don't know God unless I know God's people. See, I, I, you, I gave you my theology last Sunday. By the way, I said it was simple. And several people came to me and said, man, that's not simple theology. One person said, that's fundamental, you know. And I was just simply saying, and I'll say one thing again, to know God is to do justice. When you engage in justice, justice toward all people, no matter who they are, you know, even those. <laughs> then we know God. I want to add something to that this week also. When you can sing and dance before the Lord, and when you can sing and dance with God and God's people, when you can be proud, when you can have joy, when you can rejoice, when you can say, ooh, that's getting to me. <laughs> I saw a man here at the nine o'clock, and it was getting to him, and he fought it. I mean, he <laughs> fought it. I mean, he, 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 you, he was frowning, he was pulling back, he was, he was doing everything. And some woman sitting next to him, and um, I think she said, all right, it's now your time. Because all of a sudden, he just broke loose and got up, you know. <laughs> and when he got up, I mean, he, he, Lord, we couldn't hold him down hardly. <laughs> I bet the brother hadn't done that in a long time. You know what I mean? See, what I'm talking about is when we meet God, the Spirit is there. In the New Testament, the writer says in John, uh, we should worship in spirit and in truth. Not just, you know, come there and sit there and thank you very much. I really don't need that no more. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. It's a good gesture on your part. You helped me. I may have to go back. But anyway, you know, in spirit and in truth. You know, it feels to me like if we meet God in where we come together with God's people, and I want you to know this, to me, all people are God's people. There is none, there is no group that is not God's people. Now, I know that there are some of you would say theologically that what I should be saying is uh, only God's people are those who are believers. Well, those who are believers are non-believers also, I think. Because they don't put what they believe into action. And if you don't act what you believe, you're not believing. Are you with me? All right, okay. And so therefore, what I want to emphasize today is that when we meet God, we meet God as we gather. As we gather around the table, as we gather to feast, as we gather to, to rejoice, as we gather to feel good, as we gather to feel those critical issues that we face, like being empty, empty spaces. How do you feel empty spaces? Well, what you do is you find some hope somewhere. You find some faith somewhere. You find that you are surrounded by love. No matter where you turn here at Glide, I want you to know that you are loved. And sometimes that love comes in strange ways. You have to say no to people also in love. I'm talking about an unconditional love where you say you are harming people and you're harming yourself. But I'm talking about an unconditional love that says I am with you sister and brother and I care for you and I will always care for you. No matter what you do, I'm going to make mistakes and I do. 
Oh, Lord, do I make mistakes? I'm going to make mistakes. Somebody said to me at, after 9 o'clock, Oh, I'm so glad that you and Jan have rifts at times. I said, they're not rifts, brother. They are, they are chasms. I mean, they're big things. <laughs> Ain't no sweet thing till you get to make up. And then it's sweet. I tell you, so sweet. I want you to feel and see something today. That we cannot worship God in spirit and truth unless we also find communion with men and women and children. Amen. Now, if that sounds like I'm putting a lot of emphasis on, on, on the community, I am. I am. See, I am in the presence of God. People say, well, how do you know God is here? Well, I know one thing. The way you all were acting a few minutes ago, I don't know what that was except the Spirit. You hear me? I mean, you can define it any way you want to. And some folks say, well, they were just, you know, it was just the instrument music, just the, it was, no, no, it was more than that. It was more than that. It was more than that. When you sing, and you come here sometimes fearful up here, by the way, I want to invite anybody who wants to join the choir, make sure you get here on Wednesday, all right? But when you come up here, some of you, I've seen you, you know, well, oh, I, uh, I'm not sure. Let me sit out there for a while. I said, no, get on up there. Because I want you to experience the love that's up here. That's right. You see, if you experience the love that's up here, then you won't have to sit around and wait and be fearful of whether or not you're going to make it. They made it. You can make it too. Yeah. You see. When we gather, what happens? We come then to know that we are not only surrounded by a community of love, but that we sense that we belong. And not only do we belong, but this is home. Now you've heard me say some of these things in regards to the poor of our, those who are homeless, those who, who have to work hard to make ends meet and sometimes never make ends meet. Those who are out there. What I'm saying to you this morning, everybody is in the same pot when it comes to spiritual crisis. But you didn't hear me. Spiritual crisis means that uh, all of the flavors, you get them and you just start stirring them up. And you're going to still taste all the flavors. Because what we're talking about is the fact that I don't care how much you got. You haven't got it unless you've got spirituality. You hear me? I don't care where you live. There is a, another home that you should find called a spiritual home. You, you see, you gotta, gotta be able to do what Moses did. After going through all that stuff he went through and God said, God, I don't care what you say, Moses, get on down now and tell those folks that they can, they can leave now. And I'm telling you this morning that I don't care where you've been and what you got and what you're gonna get. I don't care all the, all the things in the world. You can have all the things in the world, but you still got to have a spiritual base by which you live your life, you see. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. But before I close, every time someone walks in these doors, and these doors, and wherever there are doors, I want you to know that there are people here who are genuine, who are authentic, who care, who love. I don't, get, I don't even know all of them. Some of you do things that I don't even know about, and I don't want to know about all of them anyway. <laughs> but I do want this, my brothers and my sisters, whoever comes in here, I want them surrounded by love. I want them to feel that they belong. And I want them to feel like they're home. You're home! 1997, you are home now. Amen!
Hollister. Jan and I would like to invite you to come down to Freedom Hall. And I think there's something down there, dessert. But come down and be with us. Visit with us. We'd be happy to see you. Thank you very much. Lee. Lee, 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 Lee